Welcome to the session called Quality Overview in Microsoft Teams. My name is Thomas Binder. I'm a senior program manager in the Teams product group. Before we dive into the content, let's do a bit of housekeeping. You can find additional modules at aka.ms slash Teams Academy. If you have any feedback on this training, if you think we're missing something, we could explain something better, please let us know by going to aka.ms slash Teams community, create a new post and use the IT Pro training label. If you have feedback on the features, so how Teams behaves and what it can do, please go to ak.ms slash Teams feedback and log new ideas or vote on its existing ideas. Please also note that Teams and Office 365 evolve all the time. We add new features, we add new functionality. To stay up to date with the latest additions, please go to ak.ms slash Teams blog and follow the blog. Also, on this slide, you can see when we recorded this training the last time, so you should get a, new, a good idea about how up to date it is. Goal of the session today is to give you a good overview of call quality in Teams. The key learnings of the session include how important a great user experience is. If users are not satisfied with the quality in Teams, they are not going to use it as much or maybe not at all which means that your Teams deployment is at risk. We will also learn that IT activities, as well as the user behavior, can and will affect quality and what IT and users can do to improve their quality. Finally, we'll talk about the role of the quality champion, a person to achieve and sustain great quality. In order to learn all of that, we are going to start talking about what is called quality. What are the different components that you can influence to achieve great quality? Then we will be talking about the role of the quality champions and the responsibilities that this role has. Finally, we will talk about a few tools that the quality champion can use to monitor and drive quality. So what is called quality? In order to illustrate why good user experience is so important, let's look at a scenario. So this is Alice and she uses Teams and we'll see what happens if the experience is good and what happens if the experience is bad. First of all, it's important to Alice that whenever she wants to call someone or join a meeting, that it works, that it's reliable. It would be really bad for her if she tries to call someone and the system just doesn't respond for whatever reason, or if she tries to join the meeting and she can't. Then, once she has established a conversation, she wants to have this conversation uninterrupted and natural, just talk from one person to the other or with multiple people. If it would be difficult to hear because there's loss of audio or there's noise or there's echo, or if people would start always talking at the same time because there's an unusual amount of delay, it would be very difficult to have a natural conversation. In terms of video, she just wants to see the other person so that she can get this additional amount of information. She wants to have a clear picture and um, also she needs to be seen very well as well. In a bad experience, the video might be blurry, it might be asynchronous. So she could see the lips moving of a person, but the person is not talking because she, the person already talked before, or the other way around. And then if someone is presenting, everyone should just see in high quality what is being presented in real time. If there would be a delay and then the presenter would talk to something that people can't see yet, it makes it very, very hard to follow what you're being shown. All in all, if you have a good experience, people are able to concentrate on the conversation, on the content. They can be productive and they will have a great experience and will be very happy to use the tool, Teams in that case. If you have a bad experience, then you will be distracted by technology. You wouldn't be able to have a good conversation. You wouldn't be able to see the other person. You wouldn't be able to follow the presentation and you wouldn't get as much productivity, as much things done as you need to. 
So if we want to define quality, then there are these two components, the reliability and the quality of the media. The reliability is about, can I establish a call when I need to? Can I join a meeting when I need to? And are there any call drops that are not expected? Like I'm just talking and the call disappears or I'm in a meeting and suddenly I'm being kicked out of the meeting. This is what we call reliability. The quality is about the quality of the audio and the video and the desktop sharing. So can I see and hear everything that I need to see and hear in my call? And who does this matter to? Well, to the end users, because they are the ones being in the call and having the good or not as good experience. But it also matters to the administrator. For the administrator, it's super important that they can measure what the quality is, that they can identify any problems so that they can go and remediate these problems. Media is influenced by a number of factors. And here on the slide from left to right, the first one is the environment. No matter how good the technology is, it can do only so much to um, get you to a certain quality. If I'm doing a call from somewhere where it's very loud, this might add some noise to the call that makes it difficult for others to hear me. Also for the video. If the light is very bad, too bright or too dark in the room where I'm sitting, or if I'm a very busy background, that might make it difficult to get a good video together and not provide as good quality as it could. The second part is the device that I'm using. It's super important that I use a good device to capture my audio and my video and play it back to others. Finally, the network. Once the audio and the video is catch captured, we need to send it over the network to the other person in the call or to the meeting participants. For the network, it's important how we connect to the Office 365 network, what the quality of the network is, and how much bandwidth we have. And let's now take a deep, deeper look at all of these areas in the following slides. The environment. A sad, loud environment can affect capturing and playing back audio. So might not, others might not be able to hear you because you're in a noise environment, but you might also have a hard time listening to others because you can barely hear. Bad lightning and busy backgrounds can affect the video quality. What the IT can do is, well, they can get sure and work with facility management that you have meeting rooms in your office where you can do calls that have an appropriate level of noise and that provide the correct lightning so that you can have good calls and meetings. Users, well, they can be very selective about where they are going to decide to take a call or to place a call so that they search an area where they have a good environment for having a great call. Devices can also have quite an impact on quality. Audio devices have different abilities to suppress background noise and reduce echo. Webcams, they provide different levels of quality. A poor device choice will always affect all the other users in a call or a meeting, not the user necessarily who chose the device. So it's always a good idea if someone is using a bad device and sending bad audio to let the user know so that they can make a better decision the next time. IT should provide qualified devices to end users that have been tested to work well with Teams. And we'll talk about that on the next slide. For meeting rooms, we highly recommend to equip meeting rooms with Teams room systems so that people have also a great meeting experience. For end users, it's important that they know that using the built-in microphone in a laptop is always the worst option. So even if they're using some not certified headset, it will give um, a better quality than a built-in microphone. Also, they should use a device that is appropriate for the situation. So if they're alone in an office, it's a great idea to use a speakerphone. In an open office, maybe not so much. The Microsoft Certified Devices program helps customers to identify devices that have been tested for Teams. These tests have been conducted by an independent lab and they will test if the device supports things like plug and play, call controls, provide high quality wideband audio. They are tested for echo and noise cancellation and the microphones need to be optimized for clear voices to eliminate crosstalk. 
for webcams. We also test for low light video, image detail, jitter, latency, and frame rate. Also for administrators, Microsoft certified devices, they don't require any provisioning. We also allow to remotely update firmware for new features and performance improvements. On the left side, you can see the logos that we have for Certified for Skype for Business devices and Microsoft Teams devices. Please note that Certified for Skype for Business devices work also with Teams. For more details on all of the devices, you can go to aka.ms slash teams dash devices. Network is the third component that can affect quality. Network metrics like jitter, delay, and packet loss will affect the user experience. We have a session on network planning, aka.ms slash teams dash networking, where you can learn everything about these network impairments and how to address them. IT can, should provide a high quality network with the appropriate net bandwidth, and they need to see that the connectivity to Office 365 is as direct as possible. For end users, they always should prefer wired over wireless networks. And if they chose to use a wireless network, they should really check that they are in a spot where they have good wireless network reception. Let's now talk about the quality champion. So why do we recommend a quality champion? This is what we've seen in a lot of customers. They start using Teams and everything is fine. Someone checks on the quality and sees, well, the users are having actually a good experience. But then over time, more and more users are starting to use Teams because they see the value in it and they get motivated by their peers. And also people do just much more on Teams. They do more meetings, they call more people. And so slowly there's more load on the network and now maybe there's more poor calls and the percentage increases. And that means that the user experience decreases. The role of the quality champion is to look on a regular basis, identify these trends and drive remediation. The role of the quality champion is twofold. There's a reactive and a proactive component. In the reactive area, the quality champion should act as an escalation point for any call quality related issues. They should act as the SME for any issues so people can reach out and get them, can let them know that there is a problem. The proactive part means that the quality champion should review weekly trends and identify the appropriate actions. They should drive the remediation actions. The responsibilities of the quality champion is to run weekly user experience reviews. They need to identify trends, the areas that need improvements. They need to drive remediation with the respective teams. And for any reoccurring issues raised through help desk, they need to drive actions if needed. And that could be user awareness because maybe the users are just holding it wrong, or it could be help desk training or any other actions. They should as well report to a steering committee on the overall quality of calls and the user experience trends. They should recommend re remediation actions, report on progress and any open issues. For the quality champion, it's very important to have good relationships with the different teams, the network team, the security team, the desktop team, the help desk team. All these teams can contribute to good call quality. And most of the remediation actions, the quality champion won't be able to drive by him or herself, he or she will need all these other teams to run the appropriate actions so that users will have a great experience. Achieving call quality is not a one-time action. It's a continuous cycle of asserting, achieving and maintaining. The quality champion needs to assert, review media quality data, identify hot topics, and then achieve, analyze specific scenarios, define and take actions and then verify the impact. And they need to maintain and continue to monitor to ensure stability. And then it starts all over again. Let's take a brief look at the tools that a quality champion can use. Call analytics and call quality dashboard are two tools that Teams offers for IT pros to look at quality. 
Call Analytics allows to get all details for an individual call. So let's just imagine the CEO calls you and lets you know that he had a bad experience on a meeting that he joined recently. Call Analytics allows you to look at that specific meeting and find out what was wrong with it. So in general, it is used reactively when users report a bad experience. The Call Quality Dashboard, on the other hand, provides an aggregated view of all the calls and meetings in your environment. It can be filtered by location, subnets, and other filters. And it helps you to, as an IT pro or quality champion, to proactively discover trends and hotspots. So, the weekly basis, you could investigate what are my worst performing subnets or locations, and then you can take the appropriate actions. In order to learn all the details on how to use CQD, I recommend watching the CQD video series that you can find at aka.ms slash SOF dash CQD. This screenshot shows you what call analytics looks like. Here I can see a meeting that Ben Walters joined and I can see here that the quality was considered as good. I can see all kinds of information like round trip time, jitter, packet loss and so on. I can also drill down and get much, much more information. Again, if Ben Walters would have told me that this was a bad call, I could use this report to find out more what could have caused the bad experience for Ben. This screenshot shows an example of the call quality dashboard. The specific report we are seeing shows us per building and subnet how many calls used TCP instead of UDP. As you might know, we prefer using UDP for all our calls instead of TCP. So this is a good starting point to start an investigation why these subnets are using TCP instead of the preferred UDP. It might be some firewall issues or something else, but so far we can't find out, but now we, we know at least where we need to start looking. Summary. So hopefully after consuming the session, you understand now why great user experience is so important. You know what actions IT and users can take to affect quality. Finally, you should understand the value of a quality champion to achieve and sustain great quality. Thank you for attending this session.